rest easy, my daughter. Our friend, till we meet again. We love you so much. I will forever hold you dear, always in our hearts. Mom, Dad, and Brother Jason, thank you. To Your Excellency, the First Lady, Madam Racha Ruto, all Cabinet Secretaries, the Vice Chancellor of the Kenyatta University, the clergy, and all other Vice Chancellors of other universities, parents, students, and all protocol observed. Good morning. My name is William Solomon, and I'm here to read the tribute of Michael Museti Mutuku. It's my cousin. And I will read the tribute of the family. But before I read the tribute, please allow me to say a few words before I read the tribute. Uh, I'm a student uh, of theology. I start at Good News Theology School. And uh, I have discover that human hearts are so weak and only one thing that gives strength and hope in the hearts of human, it is the word of God. So please allow me to read some scripture before I read the tribute. I will read in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 53 to 57. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death! Where is thy sting? O oh, grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is in the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth, giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. So, the sting of death is sin. And the power of sin is in the law. So I discover that we cannot overcome sin by ourselves, but only through the word of God. If we cannot believe the fact that Jesus has redeemed us internally through the redemption that is in the Jesus, we cannot become free from sin. And that's why the pain we feel in our hearts and the burden that we feel in our heart it is because of sin. And thus, if we can only believe that Jesus has redeemed us and forgave all our sins internally, then we can have perfect peace inside our heart and have a total rest inside our heart. So I want to encourage every one of us through this word of God. I will read the tribute to Michael Muteti Mutuku. Gone too soon. A part of us was snatched on that fateful day. A part of us vanished suddenly when the death took you away. You meant everything to us. You were everything a son could be. You are precious and so wonderful. You are one in a million. Your future looked promising and are good, but death couldn't spare you. Death has cut you off in your prime. A loss so hard to bear, nothing can compare to the pain of losing you 
but all the love you left behind forever will live on and so until we meet again. We already miss you and think of all the time how we wish we could have you back here. Death took you away from us but never away from our hearts. Will we treasure your memories forever? Rest in perfect peace, our dear son. We love you. Thank you so much. Our God is good, and all the time. Um, one year ago, one month, probably a few hours, I stood before a congregation like this one at Peace, I mean at uh, Ridgeway's Baptist Church, Kiambu Road, to mourn the passing of my daughter, Michelle, through a tragic road accident on Kiambu Road. On that day, also stood beside me as the only beacon of hope. Today, the brother stands beside me as a, as a family pay tribute to Ostro. Our hearts are full of pain and grief as we try to come to terms with your sudden death, Ostro. It's really hard to accept that your life journey on earth has ended. To think we'll never talk with you again, that we'll not have our day-to-day -day conversations, is too much. What are we to do now? We are completely shattered. You've left away way too soon. You still have so much more to do. Today we gather with our hearts heavy to celebrate the life of a remarkable soul whose kindness knew no bounds. Also our spirit radiated warmth and compassion, touching the lives of all fortunate enough to close our path. Our gentle words and comforting presence were a beacon of hope in times of darkness. Osro's boldness was truly inspiring. She fiercely stood for what she believed in, never backing down from a challenge or shying away from speaking her truth. Our courage ignited fires of change, empowering those around her to all stand tall and be assertive. But her but perhaps Oslo's greatest gift was the ability to foster unity among diverse hearts. She saw beyond differences, embracing each person with open arms and a genuine smile. In her presence, walls crumbled and bridges were built, forging bonds of friendship and understanding that transcended barriers of race religion, and culture. Oh, how Oslo's smile could write up the darkest of days. It was a reflection of our inner joy and unwavering optimism. A reminder that even amidst life trials, there is beauty to be found and reason to be grateful. Our laughter echoed with infectious happiness, bringing joy to even the most mundane moments. As we reflect on Cherry's moments and memories shared with Osro, let us hold dear the lessons she taught us. To love wholeheartedly, to stand boldly, to unite compassionately, and to smile brightly, even in the face of adversity. Though she may no longer walk among us, our spirit lives on in the country's lives she touched, forever etched in our hearts. We had such high hopes in the vibrant fine girl you are turned up into. Walking towards your dream with diligence and finance, we thank God for gifting you to us and allowing you to be part of your, allowing us, sorry, to be part of your 21 years on this earth. We now release you back to him and await a reunion at his time. Rest in peace, dear Oslo. Your kindness, boldness, unity, and smile will continue to inspire as for generations to come. Kindly allow me to ask the family to stand up and wave to the crowd. Family of us from Wendwa, who is Thank you so much. Be blessed.
Thank you, thank you, distinguished guests. Allow me to read my tribute. On behalf of the Opio family, we gather here today with heavy hearts to celebrate life of our beloved Neville, a son, brother, and friend who touched the lives of many. Neville's sudden departure has left us shattered, but we find solace in the knowledge that he is in a better place. Neville was more than just a family member. He was a pillar of strength and a source of inspiration known affectionately as Pastor Osma Oman Neville. He lived a life dedicated to serving God and uplifting. Those around him, his words of wisdom and encouragement, son, Neville brought immense joy and pride to his parents, Zachary and Nelly. His, dedicated, his dedication to his studies and his vision for a brighter future were evident to all who knew him. His passing leaves the void that can never be filled. But we take comfort in the memories we shared and the love he bestowed upon us. To his siblings, Neville was not just a brother, but a close companion and a confidant. His letter was infectious and his presence brought warmth and light into their lives. They will always cherish the moments they shared with him, holding on to his memory as a source of strength and comfort. Neville's impact extended beyond his family, reaching into community and touching the lives of all who knew him. His commitment to excellence and integrity set a standard for us all to aspire to, and his legacy of love will endure for generations to come. Thou Neville may no longer be with us, his spirit lives on in our hearts. We will forever remember him for his kindness, his laughter, and his unwavering faith. As we bid farewell to our dear Neville, we take comfort in the knowledge that he is at peace watching over us from above. Rest in peace, dear Neville. You will be, deep, you will be deeply missed, but your memory will live on in our hearts forever. For those who came for Neville, just wait for me. Those who came for Neville, thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Her Excellence, um, uh, the Cabinet Secretary, Principal Secretaries, and the entire KU fraternity. Praise God. Uh, this is a letter to my baby brother, Austin Omondi Owino. My baby brother, I never thought it would be you. I couldn't believe the news I was hearing was true. I could only scream, God, not Austin, please. And before I knew it, I was down on my knees. First I lose my father, now I lose my favorite brother. I talked to you the morning before the incident. There had to be some horrible mistake. I prayed so hard that it was, on, it was only an awful prank. I remember going down the highway, dazed and confused, sick to my stomach with the thoughts of you. I dreaded what I was about to see. I didn't want to see you lying there helplessly. I mean, how could this be really the end of your journey? How could this be that I'll never see your smile? Or enjoy our visits when you come by for a while? If only I could rewind time, I don't know about all that was took from you so that you could rewrite the ending to your life story. We have tons of memory that I will cherish, and in my heart you live till the day I perish. Rest in peace, and rest in peace, comrades. Sana to the families. We we'll now ask Fabian Amolo, Congress Nyayo Three West, to eulogize the fallen comrades. Uh, God is good. All the time. And all the time. My name is Fabiano Tieno Molo. 
I'm the congressperson near Three West and Flash Two. I was the class rep of I was the class rep and uh, I kindly request my colleagues, the survivors, to stand up as I'm going to your you My colleagues, can you stand up? Just Monday. It feels like yesterday, but also a lifetime ago. Our friends, vibrant with life, and now this silence. It is impossible to believe. Their names echoes in my mind. Austin, Beneas, Patricia, among others. We were a team, a family, men to face the world together. I'm here in these last few days we have all felt the shock that disbelief the halls was the halls where we studied where we loved now seems so squared. It's hard to make sense of it all. We want answers and maybe those will never fully want. But something else happens too. In the awful first hours, while we waited for news outside the hospital, I personally saw strength. It wasn't easy. It, won't, it wasn't calm. It was raining and we were there for each other. We shared tears. We dug to hope our community. It felt stronger in the face of something meant to break us. I could stand here for hours and not to do justice but to who they were. But please, let me tell you, my brothers and sisters, I share memories with all my classmates who passed. Benias, Austin, they were my best friends. At our first stop, I bought a snack. I ate and shared with them. Little did I know that that was the last time I was having a meal with them. It is so hard to believe. To join at the first stop also, I took a photo of John and my fellow students. Patricia, while John was taking us, was taking a photo of me, Patricia was in the background. Helen Bula. The only thing I can remember or I can say about her, she was ever smiling. And she was a joker too. He, she used to make a lot of fun and we love. A lot what to say about Oslo. Oslo was my best friend. 
we used to hang out. There's no day we ever attended class. Now, Sloka Kosa Kunstalimia. To my brother Nevi, that was like a brother. He was there for everyone. He was there to support anyone. He was a very focused person. The world feels different now, especially to me and to the family, also to the KU fraternity. It is honest to say that my dreams for the future have shifted. The accident is born into my mind. I know it always be. But she just smiles. Your voices those are what I fall to hold on to. Praise the Lord. These last days have been a blur of grief, of anger, of asking myself why. Those questions might never go away. Maybe we never get the answers we want. Honestly, we are traumatized. That's the truth. And it is okay to say it aloud. I see it in your eyes, in the faces of our professors, my classmates and my fellow comrades. We are all struggling. Maybe some days it feels too much to even be here on campus. That's understandable. But dwelling in the darkness doesn't honor them. The comrades and old brothers and sisters we lost they wanted a better world. They studied hard, they cared deeply, they dared to dream big. Their spirit lives on. And it's up to us now to carry that forward. It is not just about passing our exams anymore as the HMI department. They deserve more. We need to be the kind of people they were. Supportive. Passionate. Determined to make something of ourselves. Focused and ambitious. Many of us, we share their dream of improving healthcare in Kenya. I know it's hard to picture that future right now, but we owe it to them to try to push harder to refuse to let their potential with them. It's hard. It, it will always be hard. Those of us who are in the bus, especially me, and those of us who waited for the news. We know the pain will never completely fade, but we thank God that we are alive. We will remember them, the fallen comrades. 
Helen Austin, Beneas Michael, Valerie Oslo Felix, Rogers John and Patricia. We will remember their laughter, their drive, their friendship. That's the legacy they deserve. And it is the promise we make to them. Let's honor them not just with tears, but with how we act. And that's very important. Let's pick each other up when we stumble. Let's talk about our grief, not hide from it. Let's make this university a place where the memory drives us to do better. Stronger and closer than we were before. I kindly request all of us to stand up as we recite the Apostle Creed. I believe in God, Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, and was suffered under Apostles Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to hell. The third day he rose again from dead. He descended to heaven and seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints and the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting Father. Let's sit down. God is good all the time. Thank you. Thank you very much. At this time, we want to ask the Lord to comfort and encourage us. And we'll stand with the song Buana Nimchunga. David said, even though I go walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil because you are with me. Let's stand up and Dr. Ambugu and his team will lead us in this song, Buana Nimchunga.
Let's be seated. We will read from the word. of God
will be them. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death shall no more, neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain any more, for the former things have passed away. And he who, is, who sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. God our Father, we give you thanks for this beautiful morning, for giving us your light today, for giving us your Son, Jesus Christ, to illumine, especially the families of our 11 students, to illumine the Kenyatta University community, and indeed, our country, Kenya. We place ourselves and this service today into your able hands. Send your holy angels to be with us, to guide us. May your Holy Spirit come so that our hands will be held, our tears will wipe away, our hearts will be in peace. Father, we pray that this service bring the glory and honor to your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So while standing, we shall sing together the opening hymn, Mwamba Wenye Imara. So we shall all sing together, uh, led by our choir, please. It is now my humble duty to invite our Vice Chancellor of Kenyatta University, Professor Paul K. Wainaina, to come and make the welcoming and introductory remarks. Professor Wainaina, please. Excellency, the First Lady of the Republic of Kenya, Mama Ruse Ruto, the Cabinet Secretary, Minister of Education, Honorable Ezekiel Machogu, Principal Secretary, State Department of Higher Education, Dr. Beatrice Inyangara, Chairman of Council, Kenyatta University, Dr. Ben Chumo, Chairman of Councils from other universities, all the Vice Chancellors who are here with us, members of Kenyatta University Council, Vice Chancellors from all the public and private universities, CEOs of organization, institutions who are here with us, members of Kenyatta University management, parents, guardians, and relatives of the departed students, alumni and friends of KU, staff and students of KU and other universities and schools, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, let us all be upstanding for a minute 
of silence in honor of the 11 dear students who we lost in the road accident at Maungu. Please take your seat. Your Excellency, Monday 18th March 2024 is a day that will remain etched in the collective memory of all that are gathered here. It is on the evening of this day that we received the sad news of the tragic road accident involving one of our buses at Maungu near Voi. In the bus were 54 students from the Department of Health Management and Informatics in the School of Health Sciences. They were traveling to Mombasa for an academic trip accompanied by four members of staff. Today, we gather here in fellowship and prayer with family members and friends to mourn the tragic loss of 11 bright souls taken from us for, uh, for us far too soon on that day. It is with a heavy heart that I read out their names. Augustine Omondi Owino, Benayas Otieno, Felix Ngori Yata, Helen Bura Kisilu, John Biriri Moredi, Michael Moteti Mutuku, Naveo Omondi Opio, Oslo Mwendwa, Patricia Morugi Mwangi, Rogers Kiprotich Rono, Veris Akinyi. You are our beloved sons and daughters, nieces and nephews, our close friends and relatives. You are our students. You have been a source of pride, joy, and encouragement to those who gather here. It is still unbelievable that we are gathered here to bid you goodbye. Yet, we find peace in our firm belief that you have found rest and peace in the arms of your maker. We find strength in our communion here today, all those that knew and loved you dearly. We bid you goodbye today, but know that when our time comes, we will also travel the journey you have traveled. To the families and friends of the departed dear ones, allow me to once again express our heartfelt condolences for your loss. You are humbled by your acceptance to join KU community so that together we can lift each other as we navigate through this unimaginable sorrow. As a university, we pledge to stand with you as you make plans to lay your daughter or son to rest. I wish to assure you that the university has put in place plans to assist you bear the financial cost of this tragedy that has come this far. Ladies and gentlemen, let us not forget the survivors of this tragedy, some of whom are with us today. There are also those who sustain serious and life-changing injuries 
who are recuperating in Avenue Hospital in Nairobi. We acknowledge that you went through a very traumatic experience, 